All right, we're going to do some probability problems this time where we have some overlap. So we have events that are not mutually exclusive. So we'll be using a two-way table or a Venn diagram to make this a much easier to sort out. Um, we'll then have to have a general addition rule that will apply to situations that are both you know, mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. So it's general because it will apply to all of them in the end. So you can remember that when the events were mutually exclusive, uh, the probability that event A or event B happens is the probability that A happens plus the probability that B happens. However, what if they're not mutually exclusive? So, Here's a scenario here, okay, and uh, I'll erase this here, pretend I didn't have that yet. All right, so let's say we have uh, 25 AP students in a class and they are surveyed. Not surprisingly, since they were taking AP stats, a lot of them liked math. All right, so here's the gender of the students. They're, um, so there were eight male students and 12 female students. That's not true. There were 10 male students and 15 female students because there's 25 all together. So we need to add up our, our columns and add up our rows here to really sort out what's going on. All right, so male students, there were 10 and they were asked if they prefer math or English. Eight out of the 10 males uh, preferred math, two out of the 10 preferred English. For the females, 12 out of 15 preferred math and three out of 15 preferred English. And we can add up our rows and we can see there were 20 students who preferred math and there were five that preferred English. So that makes 25 students. Now, if we were asked the question, what is the probability that a student is either female or prefers math? And we just try to do, uh, you know, what is the probability uh, that they are female? Let's see. 15, there were 15 females out of 25, plus what is the probability that they preferred math? Man, let's go back here. So 15 females and preferred math, 20, 20 out of 25. We got a big problem here because that makes 35 out of 25, that's impossible to have a probability that's greater than 1. So that cannot be correct. Okay, so the rule for mutually exclusive events does not work when they're not mutually exclusive. Okay, we're going to have to make some kind of an adjustment. Now let's go back and look at the two-way table and find those who prefer um, math or are female. And we'll circle the ones um, that that would apply to. Okay, so these are female, these are female students, and um, these are male students, but they do prefer math. So it was, they're either female or prefer math, just not these two. So that's eight plus 12 plus three, that makes 23. So the answer here, the correct answer should be 23 out of 25. So why did we end up getting 
35 out of 25? Well, it's because we counted some students twice. Okay, so we were counting all those who preferred math. So these 20, right, in this row, those 20, and all those who were female, so these 15. So this 12 got counted twice. So that's where the problem is. We counted some people twice because they fit both conditions. So what we're going to have to do is subtract the 12 because they're included here and here, but we can make up for counting them twice by subtracting 12 25ths. So now we have 35 and then subtract the 12. That's 23. That matches. So that's it. We can also make a Venn diagram to represent uh, this, right? So this could be, uh, you put them in this circle, if they're female, okay, you put them in this circle if they prefer math. Well, there were 12 who, right away I could say they go in the middle because they were both female and preferred math. There were three other females, okay, they go over here. So here's your 15 females. All right, so uh, what's this region for right here? They're not female, because they're not in the female circle, but they do prefer math. All right, so not female, but do prefer math. Um, so that would be these, let's see, there's, Go back, make sure I got this right here. Okay, so preferring math all together. How many prefer math? 20, right? So that has to be 8 right here. So those are the males who prefer math. Right, those 8. Well, that makes uh, 23, but there's two students who are neither female nor prefer math. And so they, the two can be written out outside both of those circles here. Now we can represent the whole sample space here. All right, like so. And, you know, we could also make these probabilities and put um, a P for probability, probability that they're female, probability they prefer math. And we just have to put 25 under each one. And just change them all into fractions and make it relative to the entire sample space, adding up to one. If we add all the three fractions up, the whole sample space adds up to one. So a general addition rule. Now this would be true, okay, if the events are not mutually exclusive. Okay, we had to add up the probability that the students were female plus the probability that they preferred math. And then we had to subtract the probability they were female and preferred math to get the correct answer for what is the probability they're either female or prefer math. By the way, the uh, U is used for the word or sometimes, like U is for union. Uh, intersection sign, like upside down U, is for and. Okay, so you, you may come across that on the formula sheet or uh, you may just see the words or and and, but those symbols are traditionally used. Now, the general addition rule, I said, uh, works when the cases are not mutually exclusive, but it would also be true if they were mutually exclusive. 
That is because if they were mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B is zero because mutually exclusive means they both can't happen. They both can't be occurring. Here's a problem we'll do here. All right, in the game of roulette and the American roulette wheel, there's 38 slots, number one through 36, and then there's a zero and double zero. 18 of the numbers are red, 18 are black. The zero and the zero zero are green. A metal ball is equally likely to land in any slot. The roulette wheel looks like this. And we'll say that B is the event that the ball lands on a black slot, and E is the event that the ball lands on an even slot. So are these mutually exclusive event, events? I think not, because the ball could land on a black slot that is even, like 20. Okay, so you can make a Venn diagram, or you can sort this out on a two-way table. Okay, so we know we have um, 18 that are black. Okay, there are 38 slots total. That's because there's two that are green, remember, right? So there's 20 that are not black, 18 that are red, and two that are green. Okay, so of those that are black, okay, I could go around, we'll start with the four evens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like there's ten evens. So there must be eight that were odd, and we can just double check that. Let's start with thirty-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we uh, we know that there are one through thirty six, so that makes eighteen evens. Total, uh, well the zero and the zero the zero, and, and I suppose even two. Okay, so um, eight odd blacks, but there are eighteen total odds, right, 1 to 35 uh, odd, and so 8 plus 10, okay, 8 plus 10 makes 18, so this has to be a 10, so 10 and 10 makes 20, and 10 plus 10 is 20, all right, what is the probability of B? That we land on a black slot. Okay, probability that we land on a black slot. Well, there's 18 out of 38. Okay, probability of getting an even, 20 out of 38. Okay, what's the probability of getting black and even? Okay, black and even. We use black and, and even 10 out of 38. Okay, probability of black or even. Okay, now I could go with this rule. Okay, and add together black plus even and then subtract uh, the probability of both. So 38 minus 10 would be 28 out of 38. And there's an example for you, okay, with a two-way table.